this is part of Suricata webinars and is also part of our initiative called Women of Suricata, which is our effort as OISF to offer a safe, welcoming and inviting space for women developers and from information security to come and learn more about Suricata and our community. Uh, we are currently trying to find a more suitable name that shows our effort to welcome not just women, but also folks from other um, underrepresented groups to IT and InfoSec. So if you have any suggestions, please reach out to us. This is very important. Um, today, uh, we, we will have Tatiana Shishkova as our main talker, talk, yes, speaker. Uh, and Shivani will also share a few words about OISF and Suricon. Shivani has been working with OISF as a developer since 2008. She has been my outreach mentor together with Victor and Jason. Uh, she is our outreach coordinator as well. Uh, and she was an outreach pass intern with Linux kernel and the NetFilter project. She is also, of course, part of Women of Suricata. And as I said, she will share a few announcements from OISF today. And before I give the floor to her, um, I will also talk a bit about Tatiana. You've probably read about it, but it's good to say it here. So Tatiana is a senior malware analyst specializing in reverse engineering, currently working with Android platform, previously Windows, uh, threat intelligence and network intrusion detection with Suricata. She speaks at cybersecurity conferences, teach newbies and conduct webinars like this one. She has a specialist degree in applied mathematics and computer science from Lomonosov Moscow State University. And Shivani, if you'd like to start. Yeah, thanks, Juliana. Yeah, ju uh, just to uh, clarify, I've been working since 2018, <laughs> not 2008. Maybe it was a slip of tongue, I think. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, can you folks. see my screen? No problem. <laughs> Just did not want to give out wrong ideas to people. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. so hello everyone. Um, Women of Suricada have brought you yet another awesome webinar, uh, which will be carried out by Tatiana. I am here for a few announcements about Suricon and a little about OISF. OISF or the Open Information Security Foundation is uh, an organization, nonprofit organization uh, built to support Suricata, uh, the world-class IDS IPS engine. Um, OISF, since it's a nonprofit organization, you can support us in certain ways by becoming our consortium members or applying for Suricata support services. You could also attend Suricata trainings, which we have almost all through the year across different events. And also at Suricon, our annual conference, which I'll tell you about in a while. You could also help us with the development or reviews. If you are uh, familiar with something, uh, you can always check out our GitHub for anything that you find that you can help with and you can help spread the word about us. Um, Suricon, our annual conference is scheduled to happen in Boston this year. It will uh, be scheduled, it will happen on October 20th to 22nd at Boston Marriott Copley Place. You can find out all the information about Suricon at suricon.net. We have call for trainings open 
which means if you have anything that you are working with, which could be uh, given as a course to other people, which is related to Suricata, it could be a one or two day course, then you can submit that at suricata.net uh, slash call hyphen for hyphen trainings. It closes on June 4th. So please make sure to do that before June 4th. Call for talks is also open. If you have recently worked with any new challenges, any ideas, any research related to Suricata, any performance benchmarks, anything uh, that you would like to share with the community, uh, please submit a talk. We are very much looking forward to interesting talks from you. We do not accept any vendor talks, so please make sure to not have them in there. Uh, the call for talks, close on June 4th as well. So please go ahead and submit a talk at suricon.net slash call hyphen for hyphen talks. Um, another thing that we have open is call for posters. It's a nice way to engage with the community, have a dedicated space and share your work or something in theory that you have that uh, you would like to work uh, on Suricata. Um, it's a very nice way of uh, putting it out for the community if you especially don't want to talk about it. If you think it's not the, uh, it's not uh, rightly suited for a talk, then you can apply for posters. It will be more of a visual way of looking at things. It closes on August 6th, so please make sure to make your entries before that you can go on suricon.net slash call hyphen for hyphen posters. And lastly, our academic scholarship applications are also open. If you are a student part-time or full-time enrolled in a graduate or postgraduate or doctoral program, you are eligible for the scholarship. You can apply for training scholarship or to attend Suricon. Please note that the travel expenses and the stay expenses are not covered in this. Uh, just your training or the Suricon ticket would be covered. So uh, if you want to attend and you want to enhance your skills or you want to uh, get into the network of really amazing people in InfoSec, then you should apply for the scholarship. It closes on August 20th. So please make sure to send in your entries before that. You can find more information about this on suricon.net slash scholarships. We have uh, our Twitter channel, which I have not mentioned here um, at suricata underscore ideas, where you can find all kinds of announcements, any changes in plants, any recent info, tips and tricks of using Suricata, information about Suricon, everything. So if you want to stay current and up to date, please follow us on Twitter. It would be a nice way to stay connected and learn more about any anything that we uh, are doing. And um, if you have any questions about either of these applications which are open for Suricon, please feel free to send an email to info at the rate oisf.net. Um, that's all for the announcements. Juliana, back to you. Thank you, Shivani. So before Tatiana starts, just to let you know, questions will be answered by the end. So. Again, if you have any questions, submit that through the Q&A session and Tatiana or one of our team members will answer that by the end. Tatiana, the floor is yours. Welcome and thanks a lot for being here with us today. Uh, thank you, Juliana. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so, hi everyone, uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, what is this webinar about? Um, I will show examples of uh, malicious traffic and uh, Suricata rules to detect it. Uh, we will see which parts uh, of traffic are interesting for writing rules. 
Uh, I will speak about uh, Suricata rule syntax uh, and uh, analyze uh, Suricata rule uh, line by line. Uh, also, I will speak about uh, false alarms and uh, how to fix them and uh, how to solve possible problems if uh, something is uh, not working as expected. Uh, as uh, we have limited time and uh, this webinar is uh, designed to be beginner friendly, um, I will not cover the following topics. Uh, what is Suricata? Uh, I think that most of you are familiar with it. Uh, how to install and uh, configure it. Um, how to manage events and alerts. Um, there will be no deep dive into various protocols. Uh, I will not mention uh, all Suricata keywords as uh, the manual is uh, quite detailed. And uh, I will not analyze uh, advanced cases as uh, it's impossible to cover everything in 40 minutes. Uh, first of all, uh, where to get Suricata rules? Uh, there are different sources. Uh, there are free feeds from, for example, Emerging Threats, uh, Cisco Talos, and uh, PT Research. Uh, however, Talos rules uh, are written using SNORP syntax. Uh, Suricata is uh, compatible with most of them, uh, but some rules uh, need to, to be modified. Um, there are also uh, several sources of uh, paid feeds. Um, Emerging Threats and Talos uh, have paid feeds as well. And uh, one more variant is uh, Perimeter Protection Solutions with uh, built-in rules that are available uh, only with the product. Uh, or uh, you can uh, just write your own rules. And today uh, I will show you how to do it. Uh, how do uh, Suricata rules work? Uh, they are alerting on known malicious patterns, uh, for example, uh, specific words in the traffic, uh, bytes on concrete places of the packet, uh, packet size, uh, regular expressions, uh, specific values of request fields, uh, relative uh, URL, and uh, so on. Uh, they can also look for suspicious behavior, uh, such as uh, downloading uh, one file format when requesting for another, uh, usage of uh, not common ports for a given protocol, or uh, too many requests of one type per minute. Uh, what uh, do we need if we want to uh, write a Suricata rule? Uh, first of all, we need an example of traffic that uh, we want to detect. Um, it is possible to create a rule uh, without uh, looking at the traffic. For example, uh, if we are creating a generic rule to detect uh, suspicious behavior, or uh, if we know the communication protocol of uh, some malware family, uh, but we don't have uh, captured traffic. But uh, as we are beginners, uh, we take a given traffic example and uh, try to create a rule for it. And uh, to do this, we uh, use Wireshark. Uh, it is a great tool for uh, analyzing captured traffic and uh, capturing traffic as well. And uh, this is how captured traffic uh, in Wireshark uh, looks like. Uh, we open the file uh, with the captured traffic in pickup format. Um, here you can see that uh, I filtered events by protocol. Uh, only HTTP uh, traffic is shown. Uh, for beginners, it's uh, better to start with analyzing HTTP traffic uh, as uh, it's uh, the most uh, illustrative example. And uh, it is easier to find uh, malicious requests uh, in HTTP protocol uh, if malware uses it. Um, in uh, Wireshark, uh, you can uh, change the set of columns, uh, remove some of them, uh, or add uh, custom columns uh, so that it will be convenient uh, for you to analyze traffic. Uh, here I added uh, source port, uh, destination port, and uh, host columns, and uh, changed uh, time format. 
um, you can select an interesting event, uh, right click on it and uh, follow HTTP stream. And um, here you can see the conversation uh, between uh, the client and the server. Uh, red lines are client request and blue lines are uh, server response. Uh, the bot uh, sends uh, HTTP GET request with uh, some encrypted data, uh, but uh, the command and control server uh, seems to be not active and uh, the answer is uh, 404 not found. And um, the first tip is uh, to try creating rules for uh, the first request as uh, there could be no response. Uh, before you start writing Suricata rules, uh, check uh, Suricata configuration file. Uh, it is called uh, suricata.yml. Uh, here you need to specify uh, the path to uh, the directory with uh, rule files and uh, the list of uh, rule files that you will use uh, to scan traffic. Uh, then uh, check variables. Uh, first of all, uh, home net and uh, external net. And uh, if you don't know the ranges, uh, you may just write any. And uh, also check uh, port groups. And uh, you may specify, for example, uh, more HTTP ports than uh, shown on the slide. And uh, here is an example of a rule file uh, with two rules. Uh, it is a text file. Uh, rules must be written in a single line, uh, or you may write, write a rule in multiple lines uh, by adding a backslash to the end of the line. And uh, the hash symbol at the beginning of the second rule uh, means that uh, this rule is coming out and uh, Surikat uh, will not use it uh, to scan traffic. Uh, here you can see an example of traffic uh, generated by the worm uh, Uh It is uh, a malicious program uh, which spreads its copies uh, to other systems over the network and uh, gets comments from a uh, common and control server. And uh, there are a lot of malicious patterns uh, for creating a surcut rule. Uh, first, it uh, uses port uh, 81, uh, which is unofficial HTTP port and uh, is not common. Uh, data is sent to the relative address uh, is ready, uh, which is typical for uh, this malware family. Uh, the bot tells the server that uh, the system is infected and uh, ready to get commands. Uh, and uh, the value of uh, user agent field uh, is strange. It uh, contains um, information about the infection system, uh, such as uh, operating system, information about installed uh, antiviruses uh, and date. Uh, and uh, this is an example of a detection rule uh, for it. Uh, now let's uh, analyze it uh, line by line. Uh, in the first line, uh, you can see action type uh, alert. Uh, it means that uh, only an alert will be generated, but uh, further activity uh, will uh, not be blocked. Uh, we use this type if uh, Surikata is working as an um, intrusion detection system, uh, not prevention. Um, HTTP is uh, the protocol used. Uh, there are four basic uh, protocols and uh, many protocols of application level. Uh, in this example, we uh, selected application layer prot protocol, uh, HTTP, uh, but it is also possible to write uh, TCP. Uh, traffic goes from uh, home network uh, any port uh, to external network port uh, 81. 
And uh, this is how we specify the direction uh, from home, home net to external net. Uh, and so we can also specify uh, direction in both ways. Um, in the second line of the rule, uh, there is message uh, Dineho Worm. Um, it is a meta setting, um, a thread description that will be shown in the alert. Uh, the flow is established and uh, goes from client to server. Uh, specifying, the, specifying the flow is optional and uh, there could be uh, four possible directions. Uh, to client, uh, which is the same as from server, and uh, from client, which is the same as to server. Uh, and uh, here are three lines uh, with uh, contents. The content keyword is uh, one of the most important. Uh, content matches uh, on bytes, and uh, by default, content is uh, case sensitive. Uh, it is possible to uh, use several contents in a rule, and uh, all of them uh, must be matched. And um, after the uh, content keywords, uh, you see content modifiers uh, that are related to the content that uh, goes before them. Uh, so, uh, in the first content, Surkata will look for a post word in HTTP method. Uh, in the next line, we are looking for the part of relative address um, is ready in the URI of the request. Um, ends with a keyword means that um, it is the last part of the URI. And the next line um, contains combination of uh, raw bytes and principal characters. Uh, three bytes, then uh, none AV, uh, then three bytes. And uh, this sequence should be met in a uh, user agent field uh, of the request. Um, um, and um, a few words um, about these keywords. Uh, in our rule, um, we've seen content modifiers that uh, go after the content. And uh, there are also sticky buffers that are related to all contents uh, that uh, go after. Uh, for example, uh, HTTP response line uh, is uh, related to both contents, uh, 403 and uh, forbidden. And um, in the rule, uh, you should first use uh, contents with content modifiers uh, that go after the content, and then uh, contents with sticky buffers. Uh, by default, uh, Surkata will look for a content match in the whole buffer from, from the beginning. Uh, so it is not necessary to specify uh, all contents in the rule. Um, in the same order as uh, the corresponding bytes uh, are met in the traffic. Uh, here are more examples of content modifiers. Uh, no case uh, makes content case insensitive, as uh, by default it is case sensitive. Uh, fast pattern, it's uh, specified the content which uh, should be uh, the first that Srikata will check. Uh, it is like the fast check. Um, start with is um, used for uh, matching exactly at the start of the buffer and ends with uh, for matching exactly at the end of the buffer. Uh, the modifier depth uh, is um, means how many bytes from the beginning of the payload uh, will be checked. Uh, for example, depth one means that uh, we uh, check only the first byte of the payload. Um, offset two uh, means from which byte to start checking. Uh, so in, uh, in this case, uh, we start checking from uh, the third byte of the payload. Um, distance uh, three uh, from which byte to start checking uh, after the previous match. Um, 
it is a relative keyword. Uh, that means that uh, there should be at least uh, two contents uh, in our rule. And distance three means that after the first content match, um, we uh, skip uh, three bytes and uh, start checking for the next content. And uh, within four means how many bytes will be checked after the previous match. Um, it is also a relative keyword. Uh, it means that uh, after the first content match, uh, we are looking for uh, the next match uh, in the next four bytes. And uh, usually uh, these modifiers are used in pairs. So uh, depth and uh, offset uh, are used together and uh, distance and within. Uh, D size uh, means the size of the packet payload. Uh, and um, D size could be, for example, uh, greater than uh, something. Uh, PCRE uh, means pair compatible regular expression. Uh, it has uh, a negative influence on performance, and um, it is better to combine PCRE uh, with content uh, so that uh, content has uh, to match first uh, before PCRE uh, will be checked. Um, Suricata has um, several specific PCRE uh, modifiers, and in this example, uh, at the end of PCRE, uh, you see U modifier. Uh, that means that uh, we look for the string in the URI. It works like uh, HTTP URI modifier for the content. And uh, threshold is uh, used to control uh, alert frequency uh, so that uh, our rule will uh, produce um, only one alert after, uh, uh, will produce an alert only after uh, several events of the same type, or there will be uh, only one alert for the first event only. And uh, of course, there are uh, more keywords. Um, I mentioned only the most popular keywords, and uh, there is no need to remember all of them, as uh, Surkata manual is uh, very detailed, and uh, you can just open it. Um, the next lines of uh, our rule uh, contain rule metadata. Uh, reference contains uh, the link to the article with the description of uh, this worm. Uh, you can also specify um, MD5 uh, of the sample that uh, generated this traffic uh, or CVE or maybe something else. And uh, the list of uh, possible types of references uh, can be found in uh, ref reference.config uh, file. Uh, class type, uh, Trojan activity, uh, means uh, the type of the threat and uh, its severity. Uh, there is uh, a list of uh, common class types in uh, classification.config, and uh, you can also specify uh, custom uh, class types there. Uh, SID is a signature number which uh, should be unique. And uh, rule revision or version, um, uh, the first uh, revision uh, means that uh, this rule was not uh, changed uh, since it, its creation. And um, if you use uh, several feeds uh, of circuit rules, uh, you need uh, to be sure that the SID is unique. And uh, you, can, uh, you can check um, SID's allocation uh, and uh, here are some examples of uh, reserved uh, SID ranges. Um, if you want uh, to become a rule writer, I uh, can give you some tips uh, on how to, to write uh, good rules. Uh, first of all, uh, read manuals. Um, as I already said, uh, Suricata uh, has a very detailed manual and um, there is no need to remember all keywords. 
and in um, new versions uh, there are uh, often uh, new options added uh, but uh, remember about compatibility and uh, if you use uh, several versions of Suricata, uh, sometimes it uh, makes sense to write uh, different variants of rules. Um, use uh, keywords and uh, modifiers to uh, specify the location uh, of malicious parts, uh, packet size, uh, IP and port ranges, and so on. Uh, in order to avoid false alarms and uh, speed up processing. Um, avoid using very common patterns or regular expressions only as um, it can slow down processing dramatically. Um, you can use uh, rule profiling to check uh, if there are performance issues with your rules. Uh, but uh, do not check uh, rule performance only on the traffic dump that uh, you used to write this rule. As uh, on uh, different traffic, uh, there can be hundreds of checks, uh, but no match uh, if uh, Surkata uh, starts with inspection with common patterns. Um, here is a more difficult example. Uh, several dumps of traffic uh, generated uh, by different versions of uh, forum book bot. Uh, it is a powerful stealer uh, that can get uh, users data by uh, capturing keystrokes and uh, keep clipboard text. Uh, what is uh, similar in uh, all these dumps? Uh, first, uh, the format of the URL is uh, specific and uh, can be described by a regular expression. Uh, second, uh, host name begins with uh, 3W. Uh, then there is always a connection close uh, string in HTTP header. And uh, finally, we can uh, specify that uh, there is a certain set of uh, HTTP headers and uh, a certain order of them. And um, here is uh, a rule for this Trojan. Um, in the first line, there is uh, alert uh, action and HTTP protocol. Uh, traffic goes from uh, home network any port to external network uh, HTTP ports. And uh, HTTP port ranges can be specified in a Suricata configurational file. Uh, the message of the alert is uh, for book checking. Uh, the flow is established and uh, goes uh, from client to server. Uh, HTTP method is uh, get. Uh, for a uh, fast check, we uh, can start looking for ID in the request URL. And uh, we add a uh, fast pattern uh, to tell Suricata that uh, this is the first check uh, that should be done. Uh, in the next line, we uh, write regular expression that uh, matches on the whole uh, relative address of the request URL. Uh, then we check that um, the, uh, the HTTP host header, uh, HTTP host uh, starts with uh, 3W. Um, then uh, HTTP connection uh, value uh, should be closed. And uh, to make sure that uh, there are only hosts and uh, connection, HTTP headers in uh, this order, uh, we write uh, this content. Uh, new line, uh, hosts, uh, new line, connection, uh, and two new lines. Uh, two, new, two new lines mean uh, the end of uh, HTTP header names buffer, and uh, we add uh, starts with keyword uh, to make sure that uh, there are no more header names uh, before this content. And um, in the last line, we specify class type, SID, and uh, rule revision. Um, what if you want to create a rule uh, for uh, malware hunting uh, to look for some uh, known malware? Uh, we uh, don't have any traffic examples. Uh, so here are several ideas uh, what to look for. 
Uh, you can look for suspicious uh, field values. Um, a lot of requests of the same type, uh, which could be a brute force or DDoS uh, attack. Um, maybe there is some sensitive data sent from client, uh, from example, when uh, there are uh, login password uh, strings uh, sent to the server. Uh, or maybe there are some comments received uh, from server. Um, an example is uh, a rule for uh, gate.php uh, relative address uh, that uh, is used by malware quite common. Uh, so uh, we are looking for uh, content um, slash gate.php in uh, HTTP URI. Um, traffic uh, goes from home net uh, any port to external net uh, any port. So uh, this rule is uh, quite generic and of course uh, there will be uh, a lot of alerts and a lot of uh, false positives. Uh, but uh, here are uh, two uh, quite fresh examples of uh, malicious traffic uh, caught by this rule. Um, these are two different uh, Android banking trojans, uh, CaptureTor and Banbra. Uh, they both use a request to uh, gate.php uh, relative address. Uh, when uh, getting an alert from IDS uh, in a network, you uh, need to check if there is uh, suspicious activity or it is just a false alarm. Um, first, uh, you should get alert artifacts. Uh, for standalone Suricata, uh, check uh, if.json uh, log file, and um, I will speak about it later. Um, then uh, often the main thing uh, is to check uh, IP or domain uh, reputation. Uh, is it uh, trusted or uh, known as uh, some malicious common control server? Uh, sometimes it uh, can be useful to check uh, alert frequency. Um, if there are some uh, similar requests from uh, the user's machine, for example, uh, every hour during the whole day, including non-working hours, uh, probably the machine is infected uh, with some bot. Um, and uh, if uh, it is a false alarm, uh, you may want to fix it. Um, it is possible to completely exclude traffic from some hosts uh, by uh, specifying capture filters uh, when starting Suricata or uh, add exclusions to certain rules. And uh, the simplest way to fix the rule is uh, to exclude trusted host. And um, here is uh, the example for HTTP traffic. Um, but uh, what if uh, there are dozens of hosts uh, that uh, you need to exclude? Um, a better way is to collect uh, several examples um, of both uh, malicious and uh, clean uh, traffic and uh, try to find some patterns. Um, you can find uh, fields or words uh, that uh, do not exist in malicious traffic or uh, add conditions for, uh, for example, request format, uh, data length, uh, order of parameters or fields and uh, so on. And um, here is an example of a false uh, alarm. Uh, the rule alerts uh, on the word uh, ghost uh, with a zero instead of O uh, on the concrete place of the packet. Um, on the first and second uh, screenshots, there is uh, malicious traffic from uh, ghost rat. Uh, but on the third screenshot, um, you can see a false alarm. Uh, these symbols uh, appear on the same place uh, inside some uh, base64 expression. Uh, 
this false alarm can be fixed in uh, different ways. Uh, for example, we can add uh, one more condition to the rule, uh, the null byte uh, before uh, goes to word. Um, what if uh, you wrote a rule with uh, with a correct syntax, um, uh, but uh, something doesn't work or uh, works not as expected? Um, here are some common mistakes. Uh, first, uh, check variables specified in a Suricata configurational file. Uh, for example, um, IP addresses of local network, port ranges for different protocols, and so on. Uh, they uh, can be set incorrectly uh, for your network, or uh, the malware can use uh, ports that are not common for a given protocol. Uh, then uh, rule SID uh, must be unique, and uh, the rule with uh, duplicate SID uh, will not get loaded by Suricata. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, the reason is um, in uh, the damp of traffic, uh, you test your rule on. Uh, packets can be corrupted, uh, the flow is not established, and so on. And um, a simple way to check uh, what's wrong is uh, to remove options from your rule uh, one by one, by one uh, until there will be an alert. And, and uh, it uh, might be useful uh, to check uh, if dot json uh, circuit output, uh, where you will see how uh, circuit parse traffic. Uh, first, uh, make sure that uh, if dot json output is enabled in circuit configurational file. And uh, this is the example of this output. Um, here you can see logs uh, of uh, DNS query and uh, answer uh, alert and uh, HTTP events. Uh, IDS is uh, not a cure all and uh, has several limitations. Uh, I will list them and uh, speak about each of them uh, in more detail. Uh, so it may produce false positives uh, for uh, threat actors. Sometimes it is easy to circumvent precise rules. Uh, often uh, traffic is encrypted and uh, it is not always possible to detect encrypted traffic. Uh, there can be performance issues when uh, ideas work slow or misses some packets uh, due to bad signatures or misconfiguration. Uh, and uh, in, uh, so, um, in some cases, the infected machine uh, doesn't generate traffic, but uh, that's the problem that we cannot uh, solve with ideas. Uh, so false positives, uh, when uh, ideas uh, alerts on clean traffic. Uh, if we are talking about um, uh, intrusion detection system, uh, not prevention, then uh, some false positives are okay, as uh, there are many cases when uh, legitimate activity looks suspicious. Uh, but of course, uh, rules should be tested on a big collection of uh, clean traffic um, to make sure that the rule will not alert on any packet. Uh, circumvention of precise rules. Um, you should avoid uh, creating rules that uh, are too precise and contain, um, for example, host name, uh, as uh, threat actors can easily change it in the next version. Um, of course, there should be a balance uh, so that the rule will not produce uh, too many false alarms. Um, if uh, you can download rules from uh, open rule sets, uh, then so can do the attacker and uh, test his arsenal uh, on them to make sure that uh, there are no ideas alerts. Uh, so it is better to combine rules from open rule sets with paid ones uh, or self-written self rules. Uh, if uh, we are talking about botnets, uh, when there is a common and control server and thousands of infected machines, uh, it is not very easy for attackers to change uh, bot communication protocol significantly in uh, each bot version. 
and uh, each time update bots on each infected machine. And uh, often the attackers just don't care. Uh, there are many examples of malicious programs uh, whose communication is uh, detected by IDS, uh, but uh, they are met in the wild for years um, without any changes in uh, communication protocol as uh, many people don't use an IDS. Uh, what about detection of encrypted traffic? Uh, there are also workarounds, and uh, one of the previous OISF webinars will tell you about them. And about performance issues. Um, when uh, configuring Suricata or writing your own rules, uh, do not disregard manuals. Um, in different cases, uh, different options uh, can be turned on and off. And uh, in rules, always uh, try to use some pattern as a fast check. Um, it is also bad uh, when a rule consists of regular expressions only and uh, checks them on every package as uh, it is too slow. Uh, so to sum it all up, uh, here are uh, rule writing principles. Uh, first, uh, always read manuals. Uh, as I already said uh, several times, uh, Surigata has a, a perfect manual. Uh, then don't forget about performance. Uh, always use uh, some fast check. Uh, don't use a lot of regular expressions. Uh, do uh, simple checks first. Uh, such as uh, flow, uh, D size, uh, flow bits keywords, and so on. Um, when you are writing uh, your rule uh, for some new malware family, uh, write generic rules first, then uh, tune them so that uh, there will be a balance. Uh, the rule will be uh, not uh, very exact and will not uh, produce too many false alarms and uh, test uh, your rules on a collection of uh, clean traffic. Uh, now, if you want to practice, uh, you'll need to get examples of uh, malicious traffic. And uh, here are two sources uh, where you can find traffic from uh, known malware families. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, now, uh, if we have some time, uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. Thanks a lot, Tatiana. Uh, I see that there are a few questions in, in our Q&A, and there was also one in the chat. I don't know if you want to read them or if you want me to read them for you. Can you do you have access to them? Um, yes, uh, I'll check them. Uh, yes, uh, so the first question about the uh, file location of uh, rule files. Um, Uh, so yes, you uh, you just uh, check uh, how uh, is it specified in the Suricata configurational file, uh, suricata.yml, and uh, you can uh, specify here um, any location uh, as you wish. Uh, so uh, you can use location as uh, in old versions or in new versions. Uh, it just uh, depends on uh, the configurational file. Uh, the next question, um, where does uh, a sticky buffer stop taking effect uh, in the rule? Um, so, uh, it stops taking effect when uh, there is uh, another uh, sticky buffer met, uh, or uh, when there is uh, 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 a keyword uh, a file uh, file data, uh, as far as I remember it. Uh, 
Uh, the next question, uh, are there good resources for managing Suricata rules with uh, Amazon Network Firewall? Um, I don't know the answer. Maybe uh, someone knows uh, from Suricata team. We will see if one of the team can answer. And meanwhile, if you want, you can answer the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to generate uh, clean traffic in a lab uh, to test rules? Uh, yes, for example, uh, you can just uh, like uh, surf the internet, uh, do uh, whatever you wish, and uh, uh, while uh, opening Wireshark and uh, capturing uh, the traffic uh, from your machine. Uh, the next question, um, the size and stream size for site channel detection in encrypted traffic. Uh, can, can we use it? Um, um, right now, I'm not sure if I can answer these questions. Um, Maybe uh, there is something in the webinar about uh, detecting um, encrypted traffic. Thank you. I see there was also a um, question in the chat. Let me find it. It was from Mutas Al Salau, and it says, why to specify the flow as to server if we already used the arrow notation in the beginning of the rule? Mm, uh, as far as I remember, uh, there are two different checks uh, when uh, specifying uh, Flow, uh, flow from uh, home network to external network, and so when specifying uh, flow uh, that is established or not established and uh, goes from client to server uh, or in another direction. So uh, the first check, uh, just check uh, from which uh, IP range uh, to which range does uh, this traffic uh, goes, and uh, the flow check um uh, check uh, uh, oh, it checks like um, like the handshake between a client and server um I could be wrong but um, as far as I remember um, it works um, something like that Okay, uh, there was another question in the Q&A, and we still have time, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you inject a pickup uh, into Suricata to test the rule, uh, does it store another copy of that? Uh, how does that factor um, into limited disk, disk space? Um, I don't think that uh, Suricata creates uh, any copy. Oh, I see that Shivani wants to answer this question. I'm not sure if she no. wants to. Sorry. Go, Shivani. <laughs> No, sorry, it was a mistake. Ah, okay. Um, so uh, I guess that uh, there, there is no copy of the traffic as uh, Suricata can work uh, in live mode, um, but uh, I'm not sure. So uh, maybe the developers uh, could answer it. Thank you. Lots of questions. 
yeah. interesting. Feel free to answer the questions that Tatiana doesn't feel comfortable to answer. Uh, what is the preferred uh, CM backend solution for Suricata to handle and sort alerts and messages? Um, uh, I think there was uh, an OISF webinar about uh, handling uh, events. Uh, as, uh, as for me, uh, we use our own system, uh, so um, I uh, unfortunately cannot help uh, with some advice. Mm. There's one for the depth of the ghost rat. Mm -hmm. um, what did depth do in case of the ghost rat? I believe the value was set to six. Um, so uh, when uh, when we are fixing uh, our false alarm, then we uh, change uh, this value as um, in the original rule, uh, we checked for uh, five, uh, five bytes, uh, just the word ghost. And uh, after fixing, uh, there are six bytes. There is a null uh, before uh, these five bytes. Uh, so uh, the uh, depth of this content uh, changed. And there are a few more questions. Mm -hmm. mm. But some are about Suricata, not about rules. <laughs> <laughs> is limiting the rule to HTTP is OK? Is there a possibility where the HTTP traffic won't be detected? So in that case, maybe using the any keyword will be better. Uh, yes, uh, there are uh, examples of uh, malicious families uh, that, uh, for example, uh, use uh, some not common, uh, not common HTTP ports, uh, not common fields. And um, sometimes uh, HTTP traffic uh, could be parsed uh, not correctly, so uh, not as uh, HTTP. And um, in some cases, uh, we use uh, TCP. So uh, when we are writing a rule uh, for, uh, for this HTTP traffic, which is not parsed as HTTP, then we cannot use uh, HTTP uh, content modifiers like uh, HTTP URI, HTTP header, and so on. So um, we are writing a rule just for uh, for like uh, raw TCP traffic. Okay, and I think that answers all the ones that you were comfortable with answering, right? The ones that were more about rules. Okay. Um, and we are. We have reached the end of our planned hour, as to say. And before we finish this, I will, I would like to thank you once again for joining us. And we hope to be able to see you in Suricon somehow. Thanks, folks, for joining us as well. And don't forget to stay tuned because we have monthly webinars. The May one will be with Andy Wick of Archim, formerly Moloch, and will be uh, about the Archim project, the Suricat integrations, and many more. And the date will still be announced. And uh, that's it for now. Sorry if you were not able to answer all the questions. There were many, and <laughs> our time is up. But thanks a lot, and see you again. See you again next month. Thank you. Thank you.